comment on is we are in Sydney, Australia. Uh, a bit of a different time zone than a lot of these players are used to. There's some jet lag involved. There's a physical aspect to playing the TCG, so we'll see if that comes into play at all. But here we go, Ross. We are starting off round number one. Oh, I'm excited. It looks like Samir's got the first turn. Prizes were not terribly dangerous for either player. Nothing that really stood out there. Samir's playing an Ultra Ball turn one. And the usual turn one play is Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele, for a Wonder Tag, for a Bridget. He's already started, though, Samir has, with a Tapu Lele. So we do have a slightly dangerous position here of having to use two of them right at the beginning of the game, which firstly limits your options for Tapu Lele later on, but secondly means that two of your six Pokemon slots on the field are already taken up with Tapu Lele, which is, to put it bluntly, far from ideal. Yeah, you never really want to start with Tapu Lele GX. Uh, it's not terrible. You know, it's not as bad as starting with Shaman EX was in the past. <laughs> it's a fine attacker, 170 HP, difficult to knock out. But yeah, the big thing is it does eat up that bench spot that you would rather use for things later like more Ralts. Uh, in Samir's list, we have Sylveon GX, which we'll be seeing shortly. And uh, having that Tapu Lele GX on your board can clog things up as the game progresses. Yeah, I mean... We see here Samir, he started off quite nicely. I love that turn one Sylveon. Turn one Sylveon is always a good thing to do. Can't attack going first, mm -hmm. but it's all right. You've got the Sylveon up and running. And double routes turn one. I mean, it's pretty much all Samir could ask for here. He's got the energy attachment. He's got the Sylveon. He's got the double routes. Bent space could be an issue as he goes forward through the game. But as a turn one play, I, I like Samir's board here. I think it's really just good. Yeah, it's very interesting, Samir, deciding to go back to this Sylveon version of the Gardevoir deck. Uh, Gardevoir GX has been played a lot, and still people cannot decide what is the best way to build it. Uh, at the World Championships, we saw it with just Octillery. That was the winning deck with Diego. And uh, <laughs> as the season progressed, we saw players starting to use Sylveon GX and then transitioned into a build with four max potion. Uh, and now we see perhaps the latest evolution of Gardevoir with Zorark GX. And it's a very interesting deck. It's one I'm really excited to see. Like I say, I've had rumblings all weekend. I really want to see it in action. And we do see the Zoroark focus on the deck here as Jesper plays a Bridget and just goes straight for those free Zorua. And we've seen this time and time again with these Zoroark decks. You get free Zorua turn one. If he can evolve one, two, or even three of them next turn, he's going to have access to that ridiculous trade ability, discard a card from your hand and draw two, at which point it's going to be... Very difficult to stop Jesper. Samir's not playing any ability lock here. Jesper is going to be drawing basically whatever he wants to for the rest of the game. Yeah, now it looks like Samir does not have a very strong turn two, but thanks to that Sylveon GX and uh, the energy evolution from Eevee, he is able to use Magical Ribbon and search out three cards. So even though his hand was not very good this turn, that attack allows him to search up any three cards and set him up for the next turn. Uh, at the very least... Jesper will play an N and try to disrupt the three cards he's gotten, but uh, that is the power of Sylveon GX. As long as you can get Eevee down with a single fairy energy, you know, your start is pretty good. That Energy Evolution Eevee is one of my very favorite cards in the format. It just gives you options like that Turn 1 Magical Ribbon if you go second. It, it really is just a, a great little card that does help out so many of these Pokemon that evolve from Eevee. Now, we do see an Ultra Ball coming down from Jesper here, which you've got to imagine is going to be for his verse. Oh, no, it's actually going to be for a Tapu Lele. Yeah. So we couldn't see his hand. It must be that he's got no supporter. And you called it. It's an N. Yeah, I think... The number one priority for Jesper is my opponent used Magical Ribbon. Uh, you have to assume Rare Candy Gardevoir is coming out, and very bad things are coming. So <laughs> your number one priority is to play N and disrupt your opponent, because, you know, if they go unchecked, you're going to see Stage 2 Pokemon coming out in the next turn. <laughs> yeah, you got to believe there was a Rare Candy Gardevoir in Samir's hand. And actually, we saw his hand, and we know for yeah. a fact that there was. <laughs> it turns out Jesper did actually have a Zoroark in his hand anyway. So after he pulls his six cards from his deck with an N, he's definitely got access to at least one of those trade abilities. So he's essentially going to be seeing eight cards from his deck minimum here. And... I mean, to be honest, what he's probably going to be looking for here is just get that Zorark in the active with a double colorless and just start getting some damage on the board. He does have a second Zorark, which is quite nice, and an Evo Soda for a third <laughs> Zorark. This is really quite a nice turn, too. I would say so. <laughs> yeah, Evo Soda is a card we have not seen a lot of in any format, really, but it has become a little more valuable with Zorark GX, just being able to play it and get Zorark GX into play. 
Uh, you want to get them in play as quickly as possible so you can do exactly what we're seeing here. Trade, trade, trade. Draw six cards, and uh, it really smooths out your draws and lets you kind of go off like we're seeing here. And uh, another Ultra Ball as well. We'll see if he has a rare candy in hand. We can see a turn two triple Zorark GX <laughs> and Gardevoir GX. I mean, I talked turn one about Samir's turn and how he was basically getting everything he wanted, and his, his bench was looking really, really good, and he was having a great start to the game. And it's almost like Jesper saw that and thought, you think you've had a good start to the game? How about turn two, free Oof. Zorowak and a Gardevoir? And now he doesn't even need to get Gardevoir out the active, because he can do good damage of infinite force, hitting 60 on turn two, you know, softening up that Sylveon, which is now in range for a KO next turn. And that is a really just fantastic start from Jesper that. Yeah, and I think this is the difference between these two decks. Uh, Zorark GX gives you such explosive ability with trade. You know, you draw the cards and you can play them immediately. Sylveon is fantastic, but it gives your opponent a chance to respond. Uh, it's a little bit slower. We saw Samir use Magical Ribbon, but he just got reset by N, and he doesn't have those cards to play anymore. Jesper drew all of his cards and got to play them and attack. Uh, sometimes it's not going to work out like that, Trade doesn't always get you what you need, and you do need to get a bunch of evolutions out, but when it works, it feels like Jesper's deck is just going to be a little more explosive. And all he really needs at this stage, Jesper, is just to keep drawing energy. He's basically got everything else he needs. I mean, he does have that one Routes on the bench, which hasn't evolved yet. But other than that, it's just really keep drawing into energy, keep attacking. And he's put so much early pressure on. Samir's now in an awkward position. Does he keep using Magical Ribbon? But then, of course, N's going to be a threat. And with free Zorok on the field, you've got to think Jesper can draw into an N. Or... Does he just try and get set up and start attacking? But then he's still on the back foot there. And he's going to have to get some Guard of War this turn. He does draw the rare candy. It doesn't look like he's got a Guard of War in hand, though, at the moment. It doesn't look like he did. He does have Glade, so he could get that into play if he wants. And that will be a useful card in this matchup to go after those Zorark GX on the bench. Uh, the tension here is always... In these Gardevoir mirror matchups, how much energy can you afford to put onto Gardevoir GX? Uh, the more you put onto it, the more damage you're going to do, but the more damage your opponent's Gardevoir <laughs> GX will do. So we'll see if Jesper decides on his next turn, if he wants to attach more energy to take a knockout on Sylveon GX. It is a little risky if Samir you know, gets all the cards he needs and gets enough energy to kind of hit back with his own Gardevoir GX. And that Gallade is a bit risky for Samir. Well, Samir's Gallade is a bit risky for Jesper here because, of course, you know, as, as long as Samir has played a supporter during his turn, two energy on that Gallade will get a one-hit KO on a Zoroark. So as much as Jesper's got all those Zoroark in play and he can use them to trade and draw extra cards and he can do 120 base damage with them, which is very nice, he's got to really play around those Gallade of Samir because otherwise he's just going to be taking, you know, cheeky prizes off that Zoroark and that's going to be a bit of an issue. Yeah, double puzzle of time from Jesper, getting back N and puzzle of time. And we do see choice band, so if he can find uh, double colorless energy, I believe that will be enough. Um, we need five in total and there's three, so yeah, he needs two more energy. Uh, it does 30 damage infinite force for every energy attached to both active. Obviously, choice band essentially counts as an energy because it does 30. 140 damage left on Sylveon means we need five in total. There's three there. So, yeah, just a double colorless energy on that Gardevoir will get a KO. And then it's up to Samir to see, can he get enough energy in one of his Gardevoir to respond? Because I've watched a lot of Gardevoir games. I've played a lot of Gardevoir games. One thing I've found, if you let a Gardevoir get energy and don't knock it out, the game doesn't last very long. <laughs> no. No, not really. And, you know, three energy is kind of a safe spot for Gardevoir GX. It takes a lot for your opponent to respond, especially from Samir's position where he doesn't have any energy on a potential Gardevoir GX. Uh, you can just attach this double colorless energy and not really worry about being knocked out in return. And looks like Jesper is going to take quite a big advantage here in the first game. Yeah, he's going up by two prizes, knocking out that Sylveon. And we've seen the supporter card N coming down. But Jesper's not worried about an N at this stage because he's got those free Zoroark that can trade. I was not worried about is he going to get that double colorless because he had those trades. Now Samir is able to rare candy into a Gardevoir. We see the field blower getting rid of the choice band. And now it is a question of how much energy can he get down? Can he get this return KO? This is a really crucial turn for Samir. 
Yeah, and something you brought up before, Gallade is excellent against Zorark GX. I mean, all you need is Guzma, you go after Zorark GX, you knock it out with Sensitive Blade. But when you do that, you ignore the Gardevoir <laughs> GX with all the energy, so you're kind of trapped in this situation. You can either go after the Gardevoir GX and try to knock it out, which gives your opponent all these trade abilities, or you could go after Zorark GX, which means Gardevoir GX just knocks you out. <laughs> so you can see kind of the strength of this Gardevoir Zorark build for Jesper. Uh, it just puts your opponent in a spot where no matter what they do, it, it's not great for them. No, not at all. We do see Premonition coming out from Samir, the um, ability on Gallade which allows you to rearrange the top five cards of your deck so you know what you're drawing into. Of course, one of the issues for Samir so far is he hasn't been able to get his Octillery on the board. Yeah. And that's usually quite a good thing because it allows you to draw those extra cards and it means that you rearrange them with Gallade, then you draw one or two of Octillery, but you know what you're drawing, and it's really good. There's not even a Remoraid on Tamir's side of the field here. So he hits for 120 with Infinite Force, which is not bad, but now it passes over to Jesper, and there's a potential here for an explosive turn from Jesper, where he KOs Tamir's Gardevoir, goes down <laughs> to two prizes remaining, and at that stage, it is very, very close to being good game. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tough for Jesper to get a knockout here. Uh, you need kind of eight total energy <laughs> to knock out a Gardevoir GX. We're at four right now. It is possible. You know, double colorless energy, a secret spring, and a choice band can get there. But uh, it seems unlikely. We'll uh, see what Jesper can do, though. Uh, he does have the power of trade <laughs> on his side. I mean, the other route would be a second Gardevoir coming out on a double secret spring with a double colorless yeah. energy. But I think Jesper's kind of realized the same thing as you. It's not going to happen. I believe that was a max potion coming down there, yep. healing up. And now he's basically saying, look, I'm not getting a one. I'm not getting KO this turn. Uh, that's absolutely fine by me. I'm going to reset my damage, reset my energy. Now I'm hitting for 90 damage. I can get a KO next turn. But now that I've healed that damage of max potion, I don't think you're getting a KO this turn. And Jesper doesn't need to get a KO now. His priority is getting the next KO before Samir gets a KO. So that max potion there slows the game down a little bit, but keeps it really on Jesper's pace, so to speak. Max potion from Samir as well. <laughs> uh, this is indeed what Gardevoir matchups look like these days. Max potion all over the place. If you can't get one-hit knockouts, you just see Max Potion and uh, just an energy and an infinite force. <laughs> we saw this quite a bit uh, at the previous international championships with, you know, four Max Potion. Looks like these players have kind of toned it down a little bit, but you can still see why Max Potion is so powerful in these Gardevoir decks. Yeah, it really was London with that Max Potion build. That was kind of one of the big stories coming into London. These, ooh, everyone's playing Gardevoir with four Max Potion just going full can full consistency here that was one of the big stories it doesn't seem to have gone away but i think you're right people are they're keeping the max potion but they're toning it down a little bit they're putting in a few extra tricks but what's still keeping a couple max potion in their deck really acknowledging that it is a very powerful thing to do and we see a guzma here from Jesper, and what he's actually going to do he's taken a ko on a curlia with a zoroark and he's got to know that zoroark's getting ko'd by Gallade next turn but i think he's saying you know what i don't really mind because i think this is putting me far enough in the game where I can afford to lose this Pokemon. Yeah, it also puts him on an odd number of prizes where if Samir does want to use Gallade, he'll just take another single prize and then he just has to knock out a GX to win the game. Uh, he can afford to make the play because he's just so far ahead on the prize count here. And all he'll have to do is knock out this Gallade, which he can currently do with that Gardevoir that has the two energy since Samir had to put double colorless energy, so that's three on the Gallade. So Infinite Force easily knocks it out. So you can see kind of where Jesper is thinking. Uh, knock out Gallade, and then maybe Guzma out the Tapu Lele GX, get enough energy on my Gardevoir, and that's game over. Yeah, I love this play from Jesper here. It's a very mature play. It's a very intelligent play. It's basically saying, I know I'm putting it in harm's way, but actually I fought through the next two, three, four turns, and I know that at the end of all of these turns, I end up winning the game, so it's absolutely fine. And even when that Zora gets knocked out, he's still got two trade abilities <laughs> every single turn to keep drawing all of the cards he needs to win the game. So... I mean, is there another option for Samir here? I mean, you've got to take the KO on the Zoroark, you'd assume. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you have to take this knockout. And it's not even that bad for Samir. Uh, this is probably going to play out like we just described, but it's actually going to be a bit difficult for Jesper to get that last GX knockout. 
Uh, this Gardevoir already has 90 damage on it. It's going to be knocked out by Samir's Gardevoir GX. And if Jesper can't get another rare candy Gardevoir on his side with a bunch of energy, he's actually going to be behind, I think. Uh, if he does draw everything perfectly, I think he's fine. But I don't know. It's going to be close. I must confess, I was thinking the exact same thing because, you know, he only needs one more Gardevoir KO. But then again, he's not in a position to get that KO after getting rid of this galley this turn. Although we do see a Mallow coming down here. Great card to play with Zoroark. Search your deck for any two cards, put them on top of your deck. I think he's gone for two Puzzle of Time. Yep. And then when he plays with, uh, when he trades with Zoroark here, he's going to, in a shocking twist, draw those two Puzzle of Time. And then he can get any two cards from his discard. So, I mean, you've got to think one of them is probably going to be Rare Candy. And then it might be this is how he gets that Zoroark going, uh, that Guard of War going for the following turn. I think he's going to see what he gets off of the trade. Uh, if he draws an energy, I think he'll go max potion energy with his two cards so he can heal off his Guard of War and then get two energy and knock out Gallade. If not, he's going to have to make a decision here. Uh, is he fine not taking the knockout here? Probably not. Uh, then he'll have to kind of give up this Guard of War. Looks like he's looking at double colorless energy choice ban, clearly preparing for his next Gardevoir to try and take that big GX KO. But he doesn't actually have a Gardevoir on the field at the moment. It's a Rouse as it stands. So he does need to get that evolution rolling. One of the things I love about getting that double puzzle of time is, like you said, he can trade, see what he gets, and then he's leaving his options open rather than mallowing for two specific cards and then, you know, being locked into one strategy regardless of what he draws, you know, with those trades. It looks like he's changed his mind and is just going for free energy at this stage, the double colorless and the fairy energy. And he's not going to put it on the active guard of what, because that's getting KO'd next turn. But if he doesn't evolve it, he's then got that routes on the bench. And with the energy attached, it makes it a little bit a little bit vulnerable to being, you know, picked off by a Pokemon on the mere side of the field and losing all that energy. Yeah, I think if you're going to make that play, uh, I think you should do your first trade first before you play the Mallow, see what you draw, and then, you know, if you draw one puzzle of time off of your trade, you should actually just Mallow for the second one and then an energy or something like that. Uh, he kind of locked himself into his play before he did the second trade, and you know, it might not have made a difference in the end, but I think small things like that make a difference. No, I think you're absolutely right there. Samir does finally have his Octillery on the field, which is good. He's going to probably get out to two prizes this turn. So having an ability to draw extra cards if Jesper plays an end next turn is going to be absolutely huge, especially in the end of the game. But Samir here, I mean, it's really just getting a KO with his guard of what. And as it stands at the moment, Jesper doesn't really have anything on his field that's threatening that guard of war right now. Of course, guard of war does have that resistance to darkness. So even with a full bench and a choice band, that Zoroark's only going to be hitting 130, which is nowhere near enough to KO a guard of war. So it really does come down to Jesper getting that guard of war going next turn. And as it stands, Samir might be moving into the driver's seat. Although we do need to do a little bit of mass here. It looks like it's going to take five total. Yeah, so it looks like he got there. Yeah. I believe it needs one. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I'm miscounting. Yeah, so he's already got the KO. So now it really is just setting up for next turn. But, of course, he's not going to attach any more energy to that Gardevoir because then he's at risk of making it easier <laughs> for Jesper to get a KO next turn. Yeah, and Samir does have a max potion left at his disposal as well. So uh, he's perfectly fine to kind of trade hits with the next Gardevoir that comes out. He should be able to come out on top of that. So, you know, look like a very explosive start for Jesper and a slow one for Samir, but Samir has slowly crawled his way back into this game and put himself in a position to win. He really has. It's a very exciting game. I must confess, you know, a couple turns in, I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, Jesper's got this super early, but Samir's kind of stayed fast. He's done his game plan and... I mean, they're looking at dice, but I'm pretty sure it's going to do 240, which is yep. 10 more than you need on a Gardevoir. So Gardevoir goes down. Samir goes down to two prizes remaining. It's now two prizes remaining each. But looking at the boards as it stands at the moment, I like Samir's setup a bit more than I like Jesper's setup. Oh, definitely. And especially with that artillery on the board as well. Uh, even if Jesper plays an end here, Samir has resources thanks to Abyssal Hand. And I'm struggling to see what Jesper can do here to come out on ahead here. Uh, he's going to play Mallow and search for two cards, but I don't know if there's two cards that really help him. 
I mean, he really needs Rare Candy, Gardevoir, Double Colourless, and an Energy Aura Choice Band, because it's going to take eight total to KO a Gardevoir. Well, there's free energy on there at the moment, between the routes and the Gardevoir, so he needs five more. So he actually needs a Double Colourless, and two Energy, and a Choice Band... Which yeah, isn't he, actually possible, because he's only got one secret spring on the field. Yeah, he definitely can't win this turn. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's trying to figure out, can I win next turn? Uh, can I hope that Samir doesn't have some way to win on the following turn? And even if that's true, can I win on the next turn? <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure that's possible, but he's going to try to find his way out. Uh, he does have access to his GX attack still, so he could go for a Twilight GX if he wants to, but looks like, no, just a ride is beating, and if Samir has enough energy, two he energy. can end this game. He just needs two energy, and he's got the KO here, and he's got the double colorless in hand. That should then do 210. Yeah, that's it. That's game. Oh, and he's got another just for... Oh, and he's got... <laughs> He didn't need to Guzma or the extra energy, but even so, Thanks. Samir takes game one in a game that we did not see him winning early on. Definitely not. Yes, for, I mean, turn two, he had three Zorok GX and a Gardevoir <laughs> GX in play, and he lost. How does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. All I can say, and we've known this for a little while now, turns out Gardevoir's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, the only thing I can think about this game is that Samir has more of a Gardevoir focus. And Zorak is not a great attacker against Gardevoir. We saw that, you know, in that last turn where it didn't do enough damage. And then it's really quite vulnerable to a Gardevoir with that lower HP. And, you know, Samir, Samir had better Gardevoirs at the end. He had more of a Gardevoir focus plan, whereas Jesper was kind of having to go for the Zoroark and then it's very vulnerable to Gallade, quite yeah. vulnerable to Gardevoir. And I think that really is where the game turned. Yeah, that seemed like the big turning point. Just the Gallade knockout on Zoroark GX. And uh, at some point, Jesper decided, uh, I can't win this Gardevoir trade. I'm going to start going after other Pokemon. And... You know, just ended up with Gallade knocking out Zorark, and that's where the comeback began. It really did, and it, it just came down to Gardevoir in the end. It it almost felt a little bit like a Gardevoir, what we call a mirror match, where both players are playing the same deck. And if you're playing a mirror match like that, and if it's working like a mirror match, it generally comes down to who draws better, who's got more resources. And when Samir's playing a really thick line of Gardevoir, and Jesper's playing a much, much thinner line of Gardevoir, then when you're in a Gardevoir versus Gardevoir fight, it, it comes down to Samir having that slight advantage. Where Jesper's deck comes in is with those early game trades to set up better, draw into the energy, the choice band, get those Gardevoirs on the field and roll in that way. And although he had that in the early game, come the mid to late game, that's much less important. And it's off. Yeah, so we're going to get started with game number two here in round one of the Oceania International Championships. Looks like no significant prize cards for either player. There's a Gallade in Jesper's prize cards, but I don't think that's going to be uh, a big player in this matchup for him uh, with no Zorak GX to pick on. <laughs> no, it is his only Gallade, but he didn't really focus on it last, and I don't think he will again. We do see Jesper coming here with, and stop me if you've heard this one before, Kyle. <laughs> he's playing a Tapu Lele. He's using a Wonder Tag, and I think there's a better than even chance he's going to go for a Bridget. Uh, looks like he already has, and there are the three basic Pokemon. Looks like switching up his strategy a little bit. We saw in the first game he went for three Zerua on the first turn, and uh, this time he's going for two Ralts instead. So it looks like he has recognized maybe Gardevoir is a little better than Zorark in this matchup. He does and. drop the Parallel City there, which is limiting Samir to three bench spaces. But then again, Samir <laughs> does have a route start. Oh, no, and he's and already field blown <laughs> away. So it's a completely irrelevant point. <laughs> yeah, Parallel City has risen quite a bit in popularity. Uh, it's weird. You know, last season it was one of the most popular stadiums, and then it kind of faded away. And then with Zorark GX coming back, it, hey, uh, Parallel City is good again. But oh, that was a very ugly Professor Sycamore for Samir did not get his turn one Bridget like he would have hoped and uh, had to throw away a lot of resources in the process. And what's even more worrying at the moment is that he doesn't actually have 
a second route. Mm -hmm. And Jesper, I mean, if he just gets a Zoroark double colorless energy, he's going to get the KO. And as we saw in the previous game, if, if Samir doesn't have any routes, he doesn't have any Gardevoir, and what we saw in that previous game is definitely not going to happen again if Samir doesn't have any Gardevoir. And I assure you that if Jesper's got his Pokemon rolling and Samir doesn't have any routes, it's going to be a very quick game. Yeah, if you're Samir, you might even think about retreating your Ralts here just so he doesn't get knocked out by Zorark GX. And yeah, that's exactly what he does. He's going to hope that Jesper doesn't have some way to go after his Ralts. <laughs> I mean, if I'm Jesper, I'm certainly thinking here, I want a Guzma so badly right mm. now. I want to drag that Ralts off the bench. And then Samir next turn is starting with a Tapu Lele and a Remoraid, which, I mean, they're both fine setup Pokemon. They're both fine consistency Pokemon, but it gives him no real attacking threats. And if you end up with one of these basic Pokemon, we've seen this time and again, the player who sets up can just use cards like Guzma to pick those basics off the bench and really make sure you never actually get any evolution Pokemon. So we do see Jesper Ooh. digging a little bit here, and he's got the Tapu Lele. Yeah, he drew the double colorless energy off of the trade, so he can go for this play. And it's, it's got to be. I mean, it's clearly what he's doing here. <laughs> oh, and that's got to be heartbreaking if you're Samir. He's sitting there thinking, don't have Guzma, don't have Guzma, don't have Guzma. And then Jesper's like, I'm, I'm sorry, Samir, but it turns out I actually do have Guzma. And Samir is in a lot of trouble very early on in this game. Yeah, right is beating, knocking out that Ralts. And you can see just how important it is to go first in these matchups. Uh, I think this has been amplified quite a bit in the recent uh, formats we've had, just because there's so much emphasis on evolving your Pokemon once again. Uh, so if you go first, you play your Bridget, get your Pokemon down, uh, you get to evolve your Pokemon first. You know, if Jesper went second in this game, we could have seen a rare candy, Gallade, whatever, on this uh, second turn for Samir. But since Jesper went first, he was able to knock out the Ralts before it got to evolve. So you see the big contrast between going first and going second. It's absolutely, in the Bridget format we've got at the moment, it's absolutely huge. Now we do see, we do see Samir here, bit of a tongue twister, <laughs> hitting 80 damage with that Tapu Lele, which is quite nice. And he did get the Bridget to get the free rolls on the bench, but it was really kind of a, a stalling turn almost. And it's kind of, it's turn three now that Samir's really going to get going, get these evolutions up, get these Gardevoir up and start rolling. And there is a chance here, yes, we could take another prize here and really be up two prizes before Samir ever really gets going in the game. There's even an outside chance here that Jesper could get a big Gardevoir going and actually KO that Tapu Lele. I think it's on the outsides of possibility, but it is something that could happen if he draws well enough this turn. Yeah, I think he wants to go for another Guzma and just take a knockout. And it looks like that's what he's getting with Puzzle of Time, Guzma yeah. and another puzzle. So he's going to go after another Ralts, try to prevent as many Gardevoir and Gallade as he can. And even an Enhanced Hammer to discard that Double Colorless Energy. So uh, three turns, two knockouts. Jesper is in the lead, but will this be the turn that Samir gets a Gardevoir or Gallade out? And I think for, for Samir, it really does have to be. Um, I love Jesper's play last turn. Obviously, he could have got the KO with Gardevoir. I think his play was much better. Because <laughs> that little Guzma on the route, certainly the safer play, the much more likely play. We do see an end here from Samir. But of course, Jesper's got, at the moment, these two trade abilities. So he's going to be less hurt by the end than you usually would being end to fall this early in the game. But Samir, at the moment, doesn't have the KO. He could potentially, you know, try and get a bit more energy onto that Tapu Lele. But I think what he really wants to do here is try and get a Gardevoir, get a KO with that Gardevoir or a Gallade. And then it's really his deck doing what it's supposed to do. He doesn't want to be relying on Tapu Lele here. That's not what his deck does. But he gets the rare candy Gardevoir. And now we could be seeing something. Yeah, he has access to Secret Spring. Uh, if he had a choice band, he could actually knock out the Zorak GX with Energy Drive, but looks like he does not. But he has Ultra Ball for Octillery, so we'll see exactly what he wants to go for. I mean, if he wants to draw the four cards and see, do I find a choice band and knock out this, this Zorak GX? Uh, or he could simply a Secret Spring onto his Gardevoir GX and accept he's not going to get the knockout and draw the extra card. Yeah, I think he has got that energy in hand 
Um, yeah, it's a, kind of a risky play here because it's you can get the KO with a Tapu Lele, but then you're mm. leaving it in the active, and it's there's a decent chance it's going to get KO'd if Jesper gets a Gardevoir. Or you can try a little bit safer and set up. But, of course, Jesper's already up by two prizes. So if you don't, you know, try and take a KO this turn, then you risk going down another prize when Jesper has his next turn. So a very awkward position for Samir where he's got a bunch of options, but it's really hard to know what the best one of those is. Yeah, and he does have an Ultra Ball here, but he's out of Ralts. Two got knocked out already. He's got the other two in play. I'm sure he would love to get a third one down on the bench, but uh, he just has to settle for Eevee. And this makes it so if Jesper has yet another Guzma, he can knock out Curlia and kind of leave Samir with just one Gardevoir GX <laughs> against everything Jesper has. Yeah, we see Samir there just doing another 80 damage with that Tapilele, with the energy drive, just putting damage on. I mean, Jesper does play Max Potion in his list, so there is a possibility here he just retreats to Zoroark, plays a Max Potion, and actually undoes two turns worth of attacking for Samir. So, I think Jesper here, this is a turn where he can really jump ahead in the prize race, really try and get something rolling, or he can just keep ticking along. He's got a good setup again. But then again, we saw in game one, and this has got to be playing on Jesper's mind, he had a good setup game one, and it didn't translate into a victory. So no matter how good it looks at the moment, it's got to be playing on him a little bit that, ah, oh, yeah, but it didn't actually work last game. Yeah. I, need to, I need to start taking more prizes. So he committed to going for this Gardevoir GX this turn, attached Choice Ban and Double Colors to the Ralts, and he did find Rare Candy Gardevoir. Uh, if he can get a Fairy Energy for Secret Spring... That is actually a knockout on Tapu Lele GX, and he's eyeing up his discard pile. So if he has double puzzle of time once again, and he, he does, does, we're going to see a fairy energy, and he can simply retreat an infinite force for the knockout, and that is going to put a lot of pressure on Samir to respond and a <laughs> parallel city to go with it. <laughs> Just to get rid of that Eevee, just to add a little bit of an insult there. And I love this play from Jesper here. You're right, he went all in on this Gardevoir because he knew this was the play that was going to get him close to winning. He now keeps both his Zoroark, and now we're back in that position we saw in the previous game. He's got a Zoroark on the field that's only got like 50 HP remaining, but then if you take that out, there's a Gardevoir just running rampant in the active. So Samir here really needs to look into trying to KO that Gardevoir. As it stands at the moment... He needs another 60, he needs another two. Yeah. So if he's got an energy Ooh. choice yeah. span or a couple energy. Yeah, he could certainly do it here. If he can draw a uh, fairy energy plus another one or a choice ban, he will knock out Jesper's Gardevoir. But if he misses, he's actually in quite a bad situation. He's committed extra energy, but it looks like he did find two fairy energy. And he'll start to make a comeback once again. <laughs> uh, this time he's down... Quite a bit more in the game, down four prizes compared to, I think, three last game. But And that is a major difference. But he'll, he'll get the knockout on Jesper's only Gardevoir. And if Jesper can't respond with another one, uh, that's going to start taking some knockouts pretty quickly. Yeah, Gardevoir with five energy is quite a big attacking threat most <laughs> of the time. It's, it's a pretty nice thing to have on the field. Of course, one of the big challenges with playing Gardevoir is if you put too much energy on a Gardevoir, something like an opposing Gardevoir will come and get a KO. So if Jesper's got a candy Gardevoir next turn, he's not got that difficult a route to victory. Double colorless energy or two energy and a uh, choice band. But he doesn't have that at the moment. He's just got a Rolt. So it's going to be quite difficult. And at the moment, I mean, there is potential here for Samir to just take three GX KOs in a row and win the game. Unless Jesper can respond quite quickly to this, I mean, to put it bluntly, giant Gardevoir. <laughs> and we see Samir playing an Ultra Ball here. I wonder if he'll grab another Rolt. And it looks like, yes, uh, that does open him up to a potential Second way to lose this game if uh, Jesper can go back-to-back -back turns with Double Colorless Energy and Guzma, knock out the Ralts and then the Octillery. But uh, that is probably pretty unlikely at this point. But with the Mallow, uh, looks like Jesper taking some shortcuts here, just going right for it. Oh, and he's got it. <laughs> he's actually got the win. Now, just to explain, he got the Mallow to get the Rare Candy and an Energy. He ult to grab a Gardevoir, so he could then Rare Candy and Gardevoir. He had the Double Colorless, and he had an Energy in hand. So, like I said, he had enough Energy at that point on the Gardevoir to take the KO on Samir's Gardevoir. And we see the power <laughs> of Mallow here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
Mallow at first seems very slow, and for the most part it is, but it turns out when you have an ability that says <laughs> draw two cards, uh, <laughs> drawing those cards you put on top of your deck, that's pretty good. Yeah, and we saw the excitement there from Jesper. I mean, he knew that game one got away from him. He knew he had a good lead, a great setup, and it you know drifted away from him. We saw the difference in game two. He was guard of war focused in game two. And that's what we see from a player who's won the world championships. He is able to adjust in the middle of a match. Game one, he kind of did his general Zorowak guard of war thing. He set up both of them and he got rolling. And actually, it didn't go the way he wanted. We saw an adjustment from him in game two, recognizing the specific minutiae of this matchup. And it really played out for him. Although I've got to admit, Carl, that last turn, I wasn't sure he was going to pull all of that off in one go. <laughs> yeah, well, turns out trade is pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think the big difference in the second game was that Samir stumbled on his first turn. He did not find the Bridget. He left himself with just one Ralts in play, and Jesper pounced on it. He knocked out the Ralts, and that sets you back multiple turns. You have to get more Ralts out. You have to wait more turns to evolve them. And at the end, Jesper was just far enough ahead where he could close out the game. It really feels like Samir is favored in this matchup. Uh, if both players can set up equally, it feels like he's the one who kind of has the better tools to win in this matchup. Uh, just a better focus on getting more Gardevoir out, more Max Potion, just more ways to win, and then the weakness of Zorak GX against Gallade. But anything can happen, especially when you're playing a Stage 2 deck. You know, there's always different bits and pieces that, you know, if you don't have the rare candy at the right time, it's very easy for Zorak GX to just be very aggressive and prevent you from setting up. Yeah, that is a big risk when you play decks like that. We do see Samir going first game free, which, as we've said, huge advantage. If you are in a best of three like this, it's always best to win game one. So that way, if you lose game two, you get to go first in game three. Huge advantage. And we do see a Bridget here, and he could go for a Remoraid. But as we've seen, that's not that urgent on the early turns. He just goes straight for free routes. He knows, as well as we all do, if he gets multiple Guard of War out, he is going to be in a great position this game. So straight away for those free routes. And the huge difference is, like you said last game, Kyle, if he... You know, he's got a turn. Jesper is not knocking out a routes this turn. So as long as Samir can get some evolutions going next turn, he's got the setup. And not a terrible Parallel City here, because he's actually, he's freed up a bench space for Samir. When that Parallel City goes away, Samir doesn't have a Tapu Lele on the bench, which in some ways is actually quite nice. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It will prevent, like, a Remoraid from coming down, but... Yeah, oh, Samir draws a fairy energy for the turn, so uh, it was looking like he might not have been able to get Sylveon GX, but that turned around very quickly. Thanks to Energy Evolution, we'll see Sylveon GX, and uh, this time it's Jesper who does not have the great start. Uh, still has Professor Sycamore, so it's hard to complain, but <laughs> no Bridget on the first turn, and he's limited to just one Zerua on his bench and a couple Ralts, so this time he's the one who stumbles a little bit on the first turn. Yeah, we could be seeing a reversal here. We're so used to seeing Jesper set up perfectly while Samir takes a slower setup. And it's really, you know, what has he got off of this uh -oh. Professor Sycamore? <laughs> He's got the Gallade up, and that's quite nice. You don't need three guard of our, two guard of our, one Gallade. Usually, that's, that's not terrible. People will take that in most games. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just going to follow it up with the Magical Ribbon searching for three cards. Uh, something I do want to point out on Samir's side I think he recognizes that time is a factor. Typically when we see players use Bridget on the first turn, they're you know, furiously checking to see what's in their prize cards. So mere understanding, I don't have time to do that. Uh, if I want to get a win, which is very important, wins are much more important than ties, uh, I have to you know, kind of omit some of those steps, just play as quickly as I can, just grab the basic Pokemon, I'll figure out what's prized later. Yeah, no, absolutely, and you don't want to end up in a tie because you spent too much time looking at what was prized, which was irrelevant because you ended up tying because you ran out of time. Now, you said Jesper had a Sycamore in his hand. Of course, we saw the magical ribbon from Samir, so Jesper's instinct at this stage is, right, I know Samir's got a great hand, so what I really need here is to play an N, but of course, even if he gets a Zoroark, he's got a single trade maximum this turn. It's going to be much harder for him to get that N, so if he, and we haven't seen a magical ribbon actually play out so far. <laughs> oh, we do see an ultra ball here. This could be for Tapu Lele for an end, but it's actually for a Gardevoir, meaning Esper's got to have that rare candy in his hand. And 
Is he going to leave his magical ribbon go unchecked? If he does, we are going to see a very good board from Samir next turn. Yeah, I think Jesper has two Puzzle of Time in his hand, so he could still pull something off here. You can always Puzzle of Time for Ultra Ball. And uh, no, looks like he's just going to play Bridget this turn, so that magical ribbon will go unchecked. And that is very scary if you are Jesper. But maybe he just accepted that. I gotta get my Pokemon out. Uh, <laughs> if I play an N and don't draw any more basics or anything, it's not gonna matter. My opponent's just gonna magical ribbon again next turn. And it's a horrible position for Jesper to be in because you're absolutely right. And we see there he's only grabbing two Pokemon with that Bridget, presumably leaving that fifth bench space free for a Tapu Lele in the future so that he can use that Wonder Tag if he wants to. He do see a double puzzle of time here for a rare candy and a Professor Sycamore. So we do actually see a Gardevoir this turn. Oh. And he's actually going to do 120. That All came right. out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, you know, it's a little aggressive, but I think Jesper realizing the same thing. Time is a factor, and you've got to be aggressive in these situations, otherwise you're not going to get a win. Now, it could backfire. You could end up losing instead of getting that tie. But uh, I think he understands that winning is the key at these large events, you have to get wins. You can't settle for ties in these situations, especially early on in the event. And he's going to do whatever gives him the best chance of winning this match. And you've got to absolutely do that. Three match points for a win, one for a tie. It makes a huge difference. And even though we've got, you know, we don't have a thousand player tournament here, which means top 32 and the limit is going to be slightly lower than in some tournaments, you still don't want to tie round one. You've got to make sure you're getting as many match points as possible. I do love that max potion from Samir, though. Reset that damage. He only needs one energy for Magical Ribbon, and now he's got one energy for Magical Ribbon. There you go. He uses the Secret Spring to get it. And he did have a double colorless energy in hand. He could have attached somewhere, but a little afraid of what Jesper is capable of, uh, as we saw in game number two. Didn't want to attach double colorless energy to his Gardevoir GX in fear that, you know, Jesper will be the first one to be able to kind of win that exchange, maybe with a Guzma or something like that. Uh, a bit conservative, but I think Samir has played conservatively in both of these games, and it's worked out for him so far. Yeah, we see very different styles. Jesper's had a few turns where he's gone very aggressive, really trying to set up, take big KOs, and we saw that sometimes it works and sometimes it, it doesn't quite give him the ball state that he wants. Now, we do see a Zoroark coming down here and an Evo Soda for a second Zoroark, which is very, very nice. Now, he's going to need another, well, as we talk about it with numbers, another four to KO this Sylveon. Could be a double colorless and a fairy energy and a choice band, or a double colorless two fairy energy. But of course, if he does that, he is really, really vulnerable to an opposing Gardevoir. So I don't think we would see that, because if you do that, you're pretty much giving up your Gardevoir. Uh, especially since your opponent just searched their deck for three cards and put them into their <laughs> hand. <laughs> uh, you have to imagine they have pretty much everything they could want. And looks like Jesper is just going to settle for doing 120 damage. And will Samir be able to respond? Uh, what three cards did he grab? Um, well, he's got a rare candy guard. Well, wow, that's pretty nice. And he's got the field blower to get rid of that parallel city. And he finally gets that Remoray down, which is very, very nice. And he's got a Guzma. He's mm. got a double colorless energy. He's got a looks like an ultra ball. He's really got a lot of options here. And what I love is he's got two Gardevoir and a Gallade. That's, that's all you can really hope for in a deck like Gardevoir. He's got two Secret Spring every turn that he can use. He's got the Gallade. And it looks like it's going to be a Gallade onto that Zoroark, taking two prizes, recognizing that he needs to really start going here. He needs to start taking prizes. Both players know that time is a factor. They don't think they've got a clock in front of them. But when you've played enough, you know, you get this feeling of when the game's starting to drag on. And we know he's got the double colorless in his hand. So he's going up two prizes here and really putting himself in a good position as this game goes on. Yeah, and we'll see Sensitive Blade for the knockout on that Zorak GX. Uh, for the first time in this match, Samir is taking the first knockout and taking two prize cards. We see Zorak GX being a bit of a liability in this matchup, but uh, it's still far from over. Yes, we do see Jesper playing the N and trying to set Samir back a little bit since he does not have Octillery out quite yet. 
and this is where the end becomes a lot more effective. With Octillery, you've got that abyssal hand that allows you to draw until you've got five cards in your hand, which means that no matter how low your hand goes, you can always play a couple of cards, bring it up to five, gives you a lot of options. Now, obviously, if he draws an Octillery off of this end, that would be absolutely wonderful, but... Jesper's in a kind of awkward position here. He can KO that Gallade. He's already doing enough damage with infinite force. But then he's got a free energy Gardevoir sitting out there. He's still down by a prize. And then if Samir's able to KO that Gardevoir, he goes up by three prizes and really knocks Jesper down to not an amazing setup. So you've got to think from Jesper's side here, he needs to get another Guard of War on the field so that if Samir is able to return the KO next turn, Jesper's got something he can play with. And of course, one of the quirks about Jesper's deck, he doesn't play any Curlier. He is entirely reliant on playing that rare candy Guard of War. Which means that where we've seen Samir have a couple of turns where he plays a Curlier going, oh, I'll get the Guard of War next turn, we'll be fine. That's not an option Jesper has. That being said, he's going to play Rare Candy and Gardevoir. <laughs> <laughs> As yeah, we see, it's second one. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this game is still far from over on either side. And we do see the knockout on the Gallade, which is something you just kind of have to do when you have a Zorak GX on your bench. You can't let Gallade get another <laughs> knockout. And now it's up to Samir to kind of respond. He's in a little bit of an awkward position. Um, if he's able to get everything he wants this turn double call this uh two fairy energy choice band uh i still don't even know if that's worth it he might have to settle for just that one energy infinite force you know hit for a little bit of damage and try to get a knockout on the next turn yeah it's, uh, it's you're walking a fine line here. It's a re And this is some of the awkward thing. I've played a lot of Gardo. I've taken it to a bunch of tournaments. And it really is, when you end up in this mirror situation, it's so awkward because there's that temptation there to just play a bunch of energy, get big knockouts. But the more energy you play, the easier it is for your opponent to KO your Gardevoir. So then you end up just sitting there kind of, you know, poking for 120. But then... There's always that outside possibility that your opponent has that explosive turn and is able to get a big KO on your guard of war. And it really is kind of playing the odds, looking at what your opponent's already used, looking at what you've got left in your deck, seeing what's most likely to work. We do see him playing a super odd to get his Gallade back. And I'd like to see a routes down on his side of the field at some point. Because you've got to think being able to use a Gallade to take that final two prize knockout on a Zoroark would be a really nice way for him to end the game. And as it stands at the moment, he just doesn't have that option. And as he's super rotting back the Gallade, he needs to get that routes to actually make that Gallade relevant again. Yeah, it looks like Octillery is the choice. Uh, Abyssal Hand is going to be very important as we progress into the later stages of the game gives you your best defense against N. Uh, we see pretty much every deck these days has some way to defend against what is probably one of the most powerful supporter <laughs> cards ever made. Uh, you just need some way to refill your hand. You don't ever want to get hit by that N down to one or two cards as the game goes on. No, you've got to have something like a Zoroark or an Octillery, unless you're playing a Garboda deck, which, you know, <laughs> necessarily can't play any of them because it blocks abilities. It's something you have to prepare for nowadays. So we do see Samir there hitting the 120 with Gardawa with that infinite force attack. And now it's over to Jesper. I mean, Samir's now, he's set up for a KO next turn. So Jesper really has to, I mean, search for a max potion or get that Gardawa out of the active or do something rather than just leave it there to get KO'd. If Samir is able to KO that Gardevoir, it means he's just one GX KO away from victory, at which point that Zoroark starts to look mightily enticing. And we do see just the retreat there from Jesper. Very basic, just retreat, get rid of the energy. And now we're going to see Jesper working on a two-hit KO on Samir's Gardevoir. And we're back. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we saw, interestingly enough, Jesper opted to go for the kind of overpaying the retreat cost, something you can do if you have uh, basic energy and double colorless energy. You can discard the basic energy to pay for kind of the first part of the retreat cost and then the double colorless as the second energy in the retreat cost and opting to discard all of his energy uh, to make it more difficult for Samir to Guzma and knock out his Gardevoir. I think the biggest concern at this point is it's only a minute and a half left. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this game will finish in the amount of time we have remaining. 
No, and we do see Samir going mightily aggressive here. He's got free energy on his Gardevoir. He's actually doing 180 as it stands. He will need a way to get two more energy on there. Yep. Has he, I don't think he's played a, a, an energy as his attachment for the turn yet. Uh, just double Secret Spring, so if he can find double Colas, it's going to be a knockout. And put He's himself. got it! He's actually got the double Colas! <laughs> this is the kind oh, wow. of aggressive play I was talking about, and... This is, re and he's got the routes down. If he yeah, can get a delay huge. next turn, he wins. Yeah, uh, Samir has <laughs> set himself up to win, even even though the timer is running out. He can win in this turn and the next turn. He's going to get the knockout on this Gardevoir GX, and don't forget there is already damage on Jesper's other Gardevoir GX. So if he doesn't find a max potion, he is very easily knocked out by a respond uh, a response from Samir's other Gardevoir GX. Uh, so Samir has taken pretty big lead in this game. It's just, can he finish it off before the timer is out? Yeah, I mean, he didn't even get a KO with Sylveon for the secret spring and a double colorless <laughs> energy here. So, I mean, he's played the Mallow there. You've got to think, and there's a double puzzle. It's got to be a max potion here. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when you've got no energy to discard when you play the max potion. It's just heal completely. And, I mean, that was absolutely crucial. Samir, though, if he's got Candy Galley, double colorless Guzma, which I know is quite a lot, then he's got the win this turn. But yes, for as we knew, he did have that quite easy response on the Gardevoir there. Good news is, though, Jesper's still got to take three more prizes. So Samir's got time here. Yeah, it looks like time has been called, though. So we're going to enter the plus three turns portion of this game. Uh, essentially, both players will get two turns in these uh, untimed turns i don't know how else to say it <laughs> uh but yeah if samir can get rare candy Gallade, double colors guzma he'll win the match and uh take down a former world champion in round number one but so, uh, if he does not well jesper might be able to stop him uh i just jesper it cannot win at this point it just seems like he cannot take all of his prizes in time but samir certainly can he actually draws Gallade for the turn. He just topped at Gallade. Now, he's got a couple of Ultra Ball in his hand. So one option he would have here is just discard a whole bunch of stuff from his hand so that he could then Abyssal Hand draw more cards. He's actually already got the Gallade in hand. I'm pretty sure he's got Double Colorless Energy in hand. So at this stage, it really is trying to empty out his hand as much as he can and go unless he wants to just take a slower route to victory, which is an option. He could just kind of get the curly of this turn and go, you know what, I can get Gallade next and I'm not too worried about that. But then, of course, yes, with we'll a Guzma, Zorok can KO the uh, curlier, and then Gallade's off the board next turn. So there's a lot of kind of back and forth, and like in so many of these games, it really comes down to what Samir can draw. If he goes fully in the Gallade plan and he draws everything he needs, he wins the game. But if he doesn't, he risks putting himself in a position where he's not got the setup and he opens the door for Jesper to come back in. Yeah, there are a lot of little decisions that have to be made right here for Samir. I think a big question is, does he have Guzma left in his deck? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many he's played over the course of this game, and it looks like no. I don't see one. So in that case, I think he's recognized he has to get a fairy energy and just go for a Twilight GX and shuffle those resources back in. And I think that's probably his best route to victory here. Yeah, I agree with that. And then, of course, he can, you know, he can put the Curlier down, ready for the Gallade next turn. Although he has put a double colorless energy on there, so he might be, he might instead be working on a two-hit KO here. Trying to think that Jesper's probably out of max potion, so he's not going to heal again. So he's already got the Fairy energy, so he's going to be hitting for 150 with Infinite Force here which really does soften it up for a Gardevoir KO, a Gallade KO, even a Sylveon KO next turn. And, I mean, he's got to be... Is he looking for Jesper's deck discard here? I think he's really trying to decide, does Jesper have Max Potion left? Because if he does, this could end up backfiring quite bad. And no, you've called it, Carl. He is just going for the GX attack here. Twilight GX taking 10 cards from his discard pile, shuffling them back into his deck and trying to make sure that next turn he's got all the options he needs. Yeah, this is actually a brilliant move from Samir. He gets to put enough energy on his Gardevoir GX to threaten a big infinite force knockout on the next turn, and Twilight GX to shuffle Guzma and all these other resources back into his deck. So 
it puts himself in a position where if Jesper plays Guzman and knocks out his Curlia, he'll have enough energy on his Gardevoir GX to just you know play Double Colas, Secret Spring, Infinite Force for the game. Uh, if Jesper knocks out the Gardevoir GX, he gives himself an out to get Galay, Double Colas, and Guzma and knock out Zorark GX for the game. So this is a brilliant maneuver, uh, recognizing that he can kind of checkmate Jesper. Now the only problem will be if uh, Jesper has an N and Samir doesn't draw the correct combination of cards, but uh, I think he's given himself the best chance to win. I just I saw all the cards laid out for Samir there, and it was so beautifully obvious. It was just Guzma, 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 Tapulele, <laughs> Tapulele, Tapulele, Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball. Just any possible way of drawing a Guzma going back into his deck. Really making it quite obvious, like, just so you're clear, Jesper, I'm going for a Guzma next turn. And... Yeah, I mean, there is technically a possibility Jesper can get the KO this turn if he gets a second Guard of War up, two Fairy Energy, and a Double Colorless, and a Choice Band, he will get the KO. I would think it's somewhat unlikely. Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, I think if you're Jesper, I mean, you definitely recognize you cannot win this match. Uh, you have one turn to take three prize cards, and last time I checked, that math doesn't work out. Not in this deck. <laughs> uh, the the only thing you can kind of do is try to prevent your opponent from winning. And uh, how do you do that? Uh, I think what makes the most sense to me, if he you know has the resources to do it, is bench a bunch of you know Ralts and Zerua if he has any left, and get back his Parallel City with Puzzle of Time and discard all of his Pokemon GX so that there's no two prize knockout available for Samir. Uh, I don't know how feasible that is, but that's be that would be what I would be thinking about. Uh, otherwise, it's just N, cross my fingers, and hope Samir doesn't draw what he needs. See, I love your Parallel City play. That is absolutely wonderful. We've seen his deck. He does not have the resources for that kind of play. So I think you're right. It is, you know, thinking about an N. Although he has actually gone for a second Tapu Lele here. So actually, if he hits a Parallel City now, he can at least get rid of that Zoroark. And it's a Zoroark which is really standing out as a big liability on his bench at the moment. So if he could, if he's got a Parallel City left, if he can find a Parallel City, and he's got Mallow in hand, and he's got Zoroark on the field, so <laughs> if he's got it in his deck, he should be able to find it, and then he can at least take that Zoroark off the field, but this is all under the assumption that he has a Parallel City left in his deck, which there's a decent chance he doesn't. It's very late in the game at this stage. Yeah, he played it early on, so if he doesn't have Puzzle of Time left, then that is certainly not an option. Uh, I think he's just trying to figure out, does he play Guzma or does he play N? And it looks like he's decided to go for Guzma in this situation, taking out the Octillery and hoping that, you know, Samir just doesn't have the cards he needs in hand. And Samir's just going to, or Jesper's just going to pass the turn and say, do you have it? And Samir has drawn double colorless energy for his turn, but does he have the Guzma? He's got the Gallade, he's got the double colors. He's still got Abyssal Hand ready to use. So he's got options here. Um, it turns out, had Jesper KO the Octillery, that would be it. Samir wouldn't have what he needed. As it turns out... Well, uh, he has Gallade and Double Colors and I think a supporter, so he, sh he would have been able to knock out Zorark. Oh, of course he would. Sorry, that's very, very silly of me. Yes, I do apologize for that <laughs> one. But as it turns out, yeah, he's... He as, as much as he had to not KO the Octillery, it does mean he's left that Abyssal Hand open now. And Samir, I think he's going to be able to draw one or two cards with it. And if one of those is a Guzma, then... Oh, he's not actually... No, because of course he can't Guzma up the Zorark yeah. <laughs> anymore. Oh, okay, sorry. The more I look into this, the more Jesper's made a really nice play. Um, does he have any way to switch that Octillery out? Uh, he does play Floatstone, so if he can find that, uh, this a lot of it's going to come down to what's on top of his deck with this Premonition... Uh, if he can find the right cards here, there is a Guzma, but that's not going to be enough. No, Guzma doesn't help when Zoroark's in the active. And like you say, all he really needed there was a Floatstone. Floatstone would have won him the game now. So I suppose the only option here is you attach a double colorless energy and you kind of end yourself to two cards and hope you draw the Floatstone from the end. And that would still give him the route to victory. I think I only saw an end in his hand. So I think it is at this stage you've got to end and hope you draw the Floatstone, assuming it's still in his deck. Yeah, he could also uh, 
He still has abyssal hand. There's an ultra ball in his top five. He just needs a float stone. And that Guzma from Jesper was just perfect. Leaving the Zorak in the active so it couldn't be guzma Leaving the Octillery in the active so Samir had to get it out of the active, but not by using a Guzma. I mean, absolutely great play from Jesper here. But as with all of this, he's then got to leave it to Samir and see, can he draw what he needs? He doesn't have it at the moment. He can certainly bench the Tapu Lele. And does he even have the Floatstone in the deck? I couldn't see. <laughs> couldn't see. If he doesn't have the flow stone, I don't know what exactly he does here because that's the only way he gets... No, it's oh, it's in, in the prizes. prizes! Oh, no. Oh, no! So there's no way Samir wins this game now. No, it looks like we are headed straight for a tie in our first oh. round. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate for Samir. And it looks like we are going to have a tie here between Jesper Eriksson and Samir Sengwon. Uh What an excellent way to kick off our tournament. Got to be disappointed.